All right, so let's talk about the three separate timelines in the first season of The Witcher. We've had hundreds of comments asking about this, and nearly everyone I've talked to was confused by the timeline. In the books, there's no weird triple timeline or funky convergence of these timelines. The novels begin with Geralt in The Last Wish, and eventually he meets Dandelion, and then eventually he meets Yennefer, and then eventually he meets Ciri. Everything flows in a linear fashion from start to finish, except for certain instances where some backstory needs explaining, and this is very, very common when you're telling a story. This video will be fairly short as there won't be much to add other than just clarifying what the hell is going on and when it's going on. As the show sometimes follows a sequential order and then decides to jump randomly around to another point in time. The first and oldest timeline is Yennefer's origin, which is detailed in episodes 2 through 3, and we've already reached a point of debate. This should be the furthest back that the show ever goes, as Yennefer states she's lived roughly two to three lifetimes already, but the showrunner says she's 70. But I'm just gonna ignore what the showrunner says and go with what Yennefer claims and assume that she's over 100 years old, having lived nearly three lifetimes at this point. Because of her sorcery, she has been granted an exceptionally long life, blessed with the beauty of her younger self. In this timeline, we see Yennefer recruited and trained as a sorceress by Tessia de Vries at the maid school of Artuza, and then eventually she manipulates her way to a coveted position at the royal court in Adern, and her classmate Fringilla ends up with Yennefer's original spot in the kingdom of Nilfgaard. Thirty years pass until Yennefer eventually abandons her status and travels the world looking for a cure to her baby-bearing affliction. Decades later, we see the beginning of Geralt's timeline, which begins in episode 8. Here we see Geralt being left at Kaer Morhen by his mother Visenna to be trained in the art of the Witcher. I won't count this as a specific timeline as it's more of a flashback, but it does detail Geralt's muddled origins. But if you want more information on Geralt's origins and his mother, check out our Geralt video. Jumping back to episode 1, the second timeline officially begins where we see some of Geralt's most infamous adventures, starting with the ultimatum in Blaviken and his run-in with the Sylvan Torque. Here, Dandelion begins crafting the epic tales of the White Wolf, which spread like wildfire across the continent, gaining Geralt some notoriety. This is important because Dandelion's songs make Geralt a very recognizable figure in the next event. Years pass until finally he finds his way to Sintra, where Calanth recognizes him and hires him to dispose of Dooney at Pavetta's 15th birthday. And if it wasn't clear in the show, Dooney and Pavetta are Ciri's parents that promised Ciri to Geralt via the Law of Surprise. We never saw Pavetta again as she perished in a shipwreck off screen, and as for Dooney, we'll have a video on him later. The series continues until Geralt and Yennefer's timelines come together in Rind during the event of the Djinn. This is the first time Geralt meets Yennefer in the books as well, so things are starting to line up. All the events that Yennefer and Geralt are a part of from here on do happen in sequential order, so at this point there are only two timelines, the past and the present, the present being series timeline. This of course means that Ciri's timeline contains the most recent events in the story and what is happening in the present at almost all times. The Battle of Sodden Hill, the Fall of Sintra, and Ciri's solo adventures. Ciri's timeline is sprinkled throughout the entire season, which causes even more confusion as it doesn't converge with the other two until the end of the series, and just keep in mind that series adventures are usually happening in sequential order, at least until the final episodes where series timeline reverts back for a few scenes, causing even more confusion to the overall timeline. So let me try and clear that up a little bit. From the beginning of the story, all the way until the final two episodes, all of series events happen sequentially. And then we get to those final two episodes, and we see some flashbacks of Ciri in Sintra before the fall, and we see flashbacks of Ciri during the Battle of Sodden Hill, and then it flashes forward to when Ciri meets Geralt. So, yeah, I hope that clears up Ciri's timeline, but it's definitely the most confusing of the three. And from the first time we see her playing in the street to when she meets Geralt, 
you will see in subsequent rewatches hints of all the other events during series timeline, like when Geralt meets Calanthe in the streets. So while her timeline is happening in the present, the other two timelines are constantly moving towards series to converge eventually at the final point in the final episode. So later in Geralt and Yennefer's timeline, we will see hints of series timeline happening in those. If that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. I'm, I'm doing my best here. So in summation, this is all super confusing, and I hope I helped, and to be honest, I don't think the show gains anything from this screwed up timeline. It might just be a better experience to watch it all in sequential order, so to be honest, I might just make a long edit of the show that does just that. Luckily for us, the next season shouldn't have the screwed up time hopping nonsense and should follow the events of Geralt, Ciri, and Yennefer as they are detailed in the novels. Hopefully. So that's it for the Witcher 3 timeline. Again, remember that we have three total, Yennefer's being the oldest, then Geralt's, then Ciri's being the newest. Yennefer and Geralt's timeline merges at the Djinn and then continues on from there. All three timelines converge in the final episode with some confusing jumping back and forth between all three timelines in that final episode, so it's kind of just a mess. This is one of the major issues with the series, and like I said, it should be fixed in the next seasons as I think they've seen this did not really work. So if you guys have any additional questions, be sure to leave those down below in the comments, or if you have your own clarifications, you can be sure to leave those as well. Remember to like and subscribe, it does really, really help us out. And of course, be sure to follow us on all the social media that you see on screen. And remember the motto, it's muddled timelines over everything. And I'll see you guys next time.